And go. So we're going to talk about Rachel Ziegler. Rachel Ziegler. Specifically, her most recent role. So yes. she starred in West Side Story. She directed did. by Steven Spielberg. Her next film after that was Black Adam. Mm -hmm. And now she's got Snow White coming out. She's also got Hunger Games remake, where she's the lead character, coming out as well. And think, now yeah. we have this Disney remake. Another Disney remake. Another one. Another one. This DJ Khaled. Another one. Like, Another there's one. There's too many of these remakes. Yeah. Let's deconstruct sure. this current situation. Sure. It has hit the internet quite hard, mm -hmm. specifically following one interview. Yes. Where her and Gal Gadot had been asked about the storyline yeah and rachel had essentially made it very clear that it wasn't 1937 <laughs> thank you rachel and <laughs> <laughs> and that this story was removed from the original in the way that snow white is now sort of reclaiming her independence her leadership mm -hmm. Um, and becoming the leader that she knows. Um, this isn't verbatim, so don't come at me. But <laughs> That was becoming, kind of verbatim. Was it kind of verbatim? Kind of verbatim. Um, becoming the leader that she knows she is to be following her late father's advice. Mm -hmm. That's very verbatim. Is that very verbatim? Mm. The original cartoon came out in 1937. Yeah. There is a big focus on her love story. We have a different approach to what I'm sure a lot of people will assume is a love story. Just it's really not about the love story at all, which is really really wonderful. It's yeah. an inner it's an inner journey that she goes on to yeah. find her true self. So what are your thoughts following that? First of all, okay, so she's come out and said a few things. Not recent. So that interview is actually from the beginning of the year. Yeah, it was the quite a while why ago. It surfaced now is because there's no news because of the SAG strikes. People are coming after her. Oh yeah, they got nothing to talk about. So they're dissecting all her interviews from like earlier on this year. Right. I think it was actually last year, to be honest with you. And yeah, she had an interview with Gal Gadot. I think it was on a. I don't know what it was for, but it looked like some sort of celebrity event. And she was interviewed individually as well. She said the same thing again. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, she recently came out about the SAG strikes. She was at the strike strikes. She was in the picket on the picket line. And she said that she's not going to wear no more damn dresses unless she's paid adequate amounts of money. To wear a dress all day. To wear Disney dress all day. If I'm going to stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. So she's really put a foot in it lately. It's like, yeah, that's crazy to me. It's crazy. I, I don't know that. how much she's paid for, for Snow White. Maybe a million, maybe two million. I mean, mm, obviously with the writer strikes and with them i understand that mm. and i'm sure she is too but mm. if you're going to come out and make that your statement mm -hmm. to be to be the reason why you are part of the strikes baby it's girl, disappointing. come on it's disappointing we all wear dresses every day <laughs> do we maybe not all of us <laughs> but but you do yeah sometimes well you paid a million you don't get paid a million. Well, that's the thing. That's what gets me is mm. like, you could have said so much more that was relevant and mm. poignant to the reason of the SAG strikes. And it's just yeah. awful. And also she doesn't realize the strike's not for her really. It's actually for the, people yeah. who are actually not employed on a regular basis. who are getting paid very low wages to do work that is like on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. And they want to get residuals over time yeah and she's come out and said i'm the lead in snow white and i'm being paid a million or whatever and i don't want to wear a dress anymore i know so you pay me more and it's like you've missed the point completely completely it's not about you no <laughs> <laughs> sit down <laughs> sit down uh so yeah my thoughts on what she said about the film mm. disney i'm not a big fan of anyway yeah so I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying Disney burn. <laughs> Mark, yeah, Mark is taking a front row. <laughs> I am taking a front row seat to this burning yeah. of Disney because I'm not a fan at all. Now, the reason I'm not a fan is, um, I don't know, maybe it's just something that didn't wasn't wide in my brain as a kid. I just didn't enjoy those kind of films. Yeah. And as I've got older, I've learned to appreciate them a lot more. Like I love Wally. Wally? Wally. 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 And, oh, I um, forgot about that film. That's a good it's one. It's a good film. It's a very good yeah. film. Yeah. What was the one we were talking about earlier? Soul. Soul. I've not seen Soul, but I've heard good things. Have you not? not I thought we Soul. had a conversation about it. We had a conversation about the film, but I've not seen the film. 
I know about the film. You, I, th- I genuinely hand on heart, and I wouldn't say this, although I have said this about films that I know you wouldn't enjoy, but yeah. I genuinely think you'd enjoy some. I maybe would do. I maybe would do. But this specific remake is like another remake and a long list of remakes, including The Lion King, The yeah. Jungle Book, um, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, yeah. I believe. Aladdin. Um, Aladdin with Big Willie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Replacing Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. The beloved. What did the Robin beloved. Williams? Beloved. And not only that, but Snow White has been done so many mm. times now. Mm. since Even since the 1937 mm. feature film, which was like the first feature length film. That Disney made. That Disney made, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's and ironic because that film kind of made Disney what it is. Yes. This film may destroy Disney. The yeah. way things are going. First of all, it's very, very woke. It's yeah. Very woke. So, first of all, let's talk about the dwarfs. Yeah. So, the casting in general, we can end We can talk about the casting in general. Yeah. So, in the lineup of the seven dwarfs, there is only one actual dwarf. Mm-hmm. And the rest are people who look like... <laughs> <laughs> They have been dragged through a hedge backwards and they look like this. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like this. And yeah, it's it's just baffling to me. It is because if you're going to make a, a a movie that is sort of regurgitating a narrative to make it more woke, as mm-hmm. you said, mm-hmm. to make it more you know politically correct in the present day, mm-hmm. employ people, little people. Yeah, and it just plays into the you know the there is the exact cast type that you need mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. who have done the work yes. and ready to play yes. the role. Mm-hmm. Employ them, cast them. What Please. is happening here? And I don't even think in the film, I read somewhere, mm-hmm. that I don't think they're referenced as dwarves. They're not. They're referenced they're not. as magic men, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> magic Mike, the fairy tale edition. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so there's that part. Okay. There's that part. And there's the part that Snow White is now actually not white yes. anymore. She's now Snow Brown. Yes. Rachel Ziegler is of Latino slash, I think, Czech oh, heritage. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Which is where the Ziegler comes from. Uh-huh. I don't know if, if I'm saying that right. Sorry, Rach. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So she's obviously looks fully Latino. She's not Snow White. I think the whole idea behind Snow White was... Her, her skin is as fair as snow or something. Yeah, her lips are as red as roses. Her, her hair is black as raven. Her mm. skin is white as snow. How do you know that? I, I, I don't know. I know like the little <laughs> the punchlines to so the original. Good. Yeah. Okay. It's just gotten lost in the source of it all. Yeah. Hasn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, because I've seen sort of the comparison to the backlash of the casting for Snow White that this has had versus the casting Little of Mermaid. The Little Mermaid, mm. for example. And I don't think they are one in the same. No, we'll not at all. That, because The Little not Mermaid was never, you know, the narrative wasn't set around The Little Mermaid's looks mm. except for her having a fishtail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas Snow White's narrative was set around the way that she yes, looks, hence the sure. name. Yes. And... Yeah, uh, the, the two things are just completely different ballpark. A hundred percent, and I think that's important to be said because for sure, in, especially in this conversation, yeah, yeah, because this follows very soon after the release of the Little Mermaid. Very much so. So we have that. That's an issue for some people. Yeah, I don't really care. No, I don't care enough about it to no, comment on it. Not to really. Be honest. No. The issue I have right now is you're using the brand of Snow White. Mm. So this is this is my problem with Disney right now. Go on. Using the brand of Snow White, but you're changing the whole story. Yeah. So Rachel Ziegler, like you said, has come out and said the princess was she a princess? Not princess, is she? Snow. Yeah, is she's she a princess? A princess yeah. She will not fall in love. She's gonna be a warrior. Yeah. A leader. Yeah. What? That's not the same film. Just make a new film. Just make a new film. Just make a new film. And I'm sure it would do really well standing on its own two legs. Maybe not. But it's better than, you know, remaking a film that was a classic into something that it's not. That's not. Yeah. And I understand remakes and live action remakes have kind of put their own twist on it. But this is twisting it to a point where it's unrecognizable. Mm. Yeah. And it's it's piggybacking off the success of the first film. uh Aha. And I do have a bone to pick 
with narrative with narratives that you know take the perception of love uh -huh. and use it as something to almost be made fun negative. of negative yeah. yeah yeah and it's and it's like okay we grew up on the um, and i'm saying we as in like women grew up on mm. the foundation of disney princesses with the narrative that they need to be saved by a man in mm -hmm. order to lead a happy life mm -hmm. problematic mm -hmm. however now it's gone the complete other way and it's perpetuating this so rachel ziegler was saying that this film narrative is going to be all about you know her being a leader and i'm paraphrasing but basically being a girl boss and being independent and that's our experience every day sometimes you know it's okay to not have that in a film mm -hmm. we're living that daily okay do you know what i mean i think i know what you mean and it's you know i'm just i'm just saying it's okay to kind of you know include love in narratives yeah and also let's let's just let's just break down why people go to the cinema all right, where they go to watch movies. Let's. They go there to have an escapism from the real world. And this is what I'm saying. That is yeah. exactly my point. Exactly. So when you start putting your real world personal politics into films, people are not going. And this is why right now, <laughs> since 2018, okay. the attendances of people going to cinema has gone down by 35%. Really? Is yeah. that statistic That's statistic. true? That's truth. Because people are going to the cinema and they're having their real world push into their faces. And they're like, I came here to get away from that shit. Exactly. Give me explosions and fairy tales and love and romance. <laughs> don't give me people telling me how I should feel. Exactly. I don't want that. Is that statistic purely because of that reason? Or is it because of like the streaming platforms? I think this, yeah, I think there's a it. various number of things. I think okay, streaming sure. definitely counts for something of that. Of course. But I think definitely the quality of film subjectively has gone down yeah. considerably. There's more superhero films, which are slowly starting to make less money. Disney films, as you pointed out earlier on, are making a lot less money now. They're yeah. in trouble. And so much so that they're looking at selling off parts of their company. Yeah. Um, so people just want fun. And I think yeah. the more you inject this real world politics, women and girl bosses that type thing to film, Think about who goes to the cinema. Now, this is going to sound a bit sexist, but who goes to the cinema? Mainly guys. They're not going really? to go on a regular basis. Yeah, mainly guys. Like if you say to your your male friends, "What do you do this weekend?" Mainly guys are going to go. I oh, went cinema, but girls, no, no I, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, I I don't have that experience mm -hmm. with my circle. Your of friends. circle, yeah. But statistically, if you look at the amount of people that go to cinema, it's typically guys. Probably sixty five percent to seventy percent. Interesting. Men. Interesting. So if you're making these films that are inherently um, woke, but they're pushing the agenda of women being girl bosses without earning the right to be girl bosses. They're just girl bosses. Like, they're just magical girl bosses, whatever that means. What does that mean? What's a girl boss? Just like a strong, independent woman. Cool. So, a strong, independent woman who's sexless and doesn't fall in love and will not be saved and will not have any emotion. Men don't want to see that, first and foremost. I don't think women want to see no. that, really. Oh, <laughs> this is taking a turn. It We're really not expecting has. this, are you? We're not expecting no, this. No, I, and I mean, I know I said what I said about the real world experience mm. being, you know, conveyed mm. in narratives. But I think to the extreme that you're saying, I think would be quite unfair. Mm. For example, and I know we have spoken about this before. Sure, go for it. The Barbie movie. <laughs> Seeing, no. I know, but just hear me out for one second. Go on. I, the the women experience was turned on its head in Barbie Land, mm -hmm. and I think to frame it the way that it was in that narrative mm -hmm. was really enlightening and empowering to see. Sure. I don't want it to get misconstrued from my point of view that I, while I love the Barbie movie, the way that Snow White is being reframed, mm -hmm. that's what I'm commenting on in terms of the real world experience and okay. women being, you know, pushed to, you know, be independent and, you know, love isn't an issue and da 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 da. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So Barbie movie doesn't have girl bosses. So going around kicking ass um, and impenetrable and perfect and whatever. Kind of does, but it does in Barbie Land. In Barbie Land, to a, to a degree, but to they're not degree. going around kicking ass and like being violent and 
Okay, so the girl boss, <laughs> the girl boss trait that I'm seeing, and I've seen for the past five years with all these films, is they are taking on masculine traits. They are being warriors. They are being here like Mo the Mulan. Mm. The original cartoon. Mm -hmm. She has weaknesses, but she overcomes her weaknesses and becomes a strong leader, strong warrior. In the remake, they went completely opposite. She's perfect. She has no weaknesses whatsoever. She's rude to her dad and she's perfect. And she's the strongest person in the whole of the army. Okay. That to me is too far. That to me is way too far. Um, And this is the, this is like it's being perpetuated in every single film now is that the woman has no weakness. She's got, she's got no one. Any, anyone who says anything to her, she's like, oh, I'm listening to that. I'm the strongest. I'm going to win. That to me is not good filmmaking. And this is why people are not watching those kind of films. It's Interesting. Because even if you're a leader, even if it's a male character, if they have no weaknesses, if they're not getting through something that's internally wrong with themselves, why are you watching the film? I'm not saying there's not films that do that. Like, for example, the 80s, it's full of films with men going around shooting people and they've got no weaknesses. Like Still to pretty, this day. Still to this day. Yeah. Like John Wick, for example. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Perfect example. It happens now. But unfortunately, and this is going to sound very sexist, I can get on board with that because men are just physically stronger. And that's going to sound so dumb. Oh, you're about you to, to get it. us cancelled, Marcus. <laughs> I think that's a you problem, because I think that's really unfair to say mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, typically men can be seen as stronger, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But then to kind of compare it with like John Wick versus a, like a girl yeah. boss narrative, yeah. mm -hmm. they're one in the same. They're just, you know presented in different they are genders. they are yes they are but they for me are unrealistic and again but that's, that but sounds that's what you so, just said about films it uh, sounds so escape. sexist it doesn't make any sense mm. but it kind of does and what i'm trying to give you is a perspective of why these films are failing why all of these films with girl bosses are failing it's because majority of people going to the cinema are men and they're watching these films and they're like i don't want to see this anymore and again that may be seen as sexist, but I'm just giving you fact. I'm just giving you fact. Mm. It's the same conversation we had the other day about like football, why female footballers got paid, get paid less than male footballers is because less people watch female football. There's less money in the sport, mm -hmm. so they get paid less. It's just logical. I don't think that side of things is logical. I think mm. m films are made to suit a certain demographic. Mm -hmm. And while attendance at cinema is one thing, I think it's unfair to say that the reason that that is, is because female empowerment is coming into the mix. Okay. The reason- Even if it's got outdated messages. I'm not saying they're outdated. I'm just asking you the question. I think there's part of it that's outdated, but- mm. um, I, I agree with you. I don't think they should be messing around with any of those classics. At all. Yeah, I think they're fairy tales for a reason. The fairy tales are there for a reason. You know, they come from the Brothers Grimm and bringing it back to Rachel Ziegler and talking mm -hmm. about removing this essence of love mm -hmm. and, you know, the connection there. If we're going to bring, if we're going to take it to the narrative of Snow White, mm -hmm. the love interest was a small, small part of it. Mm -hmm. She was actually manipulated by her mum, was the queen, her mother, mm -hmm. um, who's this powerful older woman to take yes. a bite of this apple. Prior to that, she was doing her own thing in the woods. She ran away and was doing her thing. And it's just kind of brought back and been centered around the notion of love. And what I was saying earlier about how love is often in present day, a tool to be made fun of almost. Mm. Yeah. But the essence of these fairy tales is that they're fairy tales. Yeah. And in fairy tales, typically there's love and there's a message. And the message typically is, if you're a good person, good things will happen. I think to move away from that and to have a Snow White where there's no love, where there's no dwarfs, like <laughs> it's called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah. It's not called Girl Boss, dot, dot. And the Magic Men. And the Magic Men, <laughs> dot, dot. Snow White is boss. It's not called that. Yeah, like, just make a new film. Just make a new film. Make a new film. And here's the problem. You have Rachel and Ziegler, mm -hmm. who is shooting off her mouth and ruining the film. <laughs> and people are seeing this. She's actually she's actually talking bad about her own film. What is that about? <laughs> Can we just touch on that for a second? You're starring in a film. Yeah. You're out doing all these press tours and what have you, yes. these interviews to boost the film. And yet you're shitting on the- On the film. Uh, that the company the, that you work for that they made back in 1930s. That made them who they that are made them today. Who they are. 
That's madness. Jay. That is absolute madness. Come on, right? And she's got no leverage to do that because, like I said, her last film, Black Adam, was an absolute flop. Was it? West Side was Story it? wasn't great. Hunger Games, I can guarantee you, is going to flop. How are they remaking Hunger Games? Didn't know. it come out like five minutes I ago? Know. I don't know. No one's no one's going to watch that shit. Yeah. Her career is going to be in the toilet. Yeah. She's getting bullied online, which I don't agree with. No, of course not. We're not here to troll. I'm not here to troll. But she was trolling other people. She trolled J.K. Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and she tro- she trolled um, the actor Jeremy Renner, who plays Hawkeye in the Marvel. Why? He's. I think he was getting a, a divorce, and um, <gasps> she trolled him while he was. Yeah, and I think the kid there was custody ba- custody battle. And she called him all sorts of names on Twitter and um, so she's been trolling other people no so now she's getting trolled and she does not like it so I just think there's a certain level of media training that needs to be had mm. and do you think it's media training I, I think it's just stupidity I, it's like that's the reason for media training no <laughs> like surely her like agent must have seen you know the way that she communicates in these situations and it's just like just Sit down, have a bout of media mm. training and shut up. get on with your day. <laughs> oh. Sit down. Because you can really up. tell in the interviews, like we said earlier, you can really tell that these aren't their words mm. necessarily. They mm. might be. Mm-hmm. And if they are, get some new words. It's the only thing they seem to be commenting on. And I feel yeah. like in a narrative like Snow White, there should be more to say, especially if it's a live action remake. Could you, right now, Pretend you're Rachel Ziegler. Okay. You've just been asked. I'm going to ask you the question about the film. I know very little about this film, just as a disclaimer. The remake. But you're going to show her how you answer the question. I cannot. I've not been media trained. Okay, let me do it. Let me do it. You ask me the question. I'll be Rachel Ziegler. Okay. Okay. Um, Could you give us some information um, about what... About the the new film I'm starring in? Yeah. It's amazing. It's the best. (laughs) Media training failed. <laughs> Media training didn't even Got let off, let the interviewer the finish the question. Sorry, go again, go again. No, no, no. You do your thing. Yeah. I feel like no, you really you have got to, you into have to your bring own. Me in. You have to bring me in. Go okay, for it. okay. Could you give us more information about the new movie that you're starring in? I'm so excited. It's amazing. It's written by Greta Gerwig. It's so cool. I can't wait. Go down to the cinema and watch it. That's Mad. it. That's uh, that's simple yeah. as that. Simple as that. What she did was, oh, you know, it's terrible. Yeah, I just, <laughs> just there was just no need face. to be that smug about a narrative no. like that. And I understand the thing is that is so frustrating as a woman is that I understand the angle that they're trying to take. Mm. But I don't. It's not every day. Like it doesn't need to be every day, every narrative. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And some things just need to be left. So what we're going to do with uh, Rachel Ziegler? Oh, we are not going to do anything, Marcus. Okay. We're in London. Okay. Why, so, what, what are you going to do? I, I'm hoping the film flops. <laughs> oh, <I don't> <laughs> I'm hoping it flops dramatically. Yeah. I'm hoping that her career ends. I'm joking. I don't want the career to end. Keep going. I actually, I rate her. I think she's a good actress. Yeah. Um, From what I saw of her and Maria, I just like, I've just seen like the music clips. She's an incredible vocalist. Mm, like yeah. she's talented at what she does. Yeah. I think she just needs to check herself a little bit. I think shut up, making movies. <laughs> Make a movie. Shut up. And it's not just her, by the way. The whole of Hollywood, shut up. Because not just her's doing this. There's so many actors, actresses, who have put in their politics into press conferences, into films. Leave it out. Just talk about the film itself. Just have fun. Yeah. And get people to enjoy themselves. And they'll keep going to the cinema. Keep going to the cinema. Come on, ladies. Keep going. Let's, <laughs> Come on, ladies. let's balance out that statistic <laughs> that Marcus so graciously gave us earlier. <laughs> Any closing thoughts? Yeah, I just, I wish her well, is my closing <laughs> thought. I wish her well, because fuck me, like... <laughs> She's got great skin. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's your closing statement. She's got great skin. No, my closing statement is that I wish her well. Truly. Mm. I wish her all the success in the world. However, the film's going to flop. Disney are making less money. Disney yeah. going to close down. And it's all her fault. <laughs> the fact that they're like making these live actions to make money and instead it's seemingly a hemorrhaging making, money yes, is, yes. is wild to me. Like It is. And Disney it. Plus, which is flopping considerably, 
they're just on a down spiral mm. right now and they need to stop with the politics yeah yeah i think it, it can be important to include sort of political notions within narratives for sure Interesting. okay i think that you know is to be said but like like films can be a version of escape as well yeah i think but the thing is i think there's two different di two different types of films mm. there's films where you can put in a message yeah like for example barbie yeah for example do the right thing for example uh think of another film uh oppenheimer's got kind of a political message in there as well sure and there's films where you just want to have bloody fun <laughs> You know what I mean? John Wick, yeah. you just have fun. It just makes no fun. sense. Snow White. Snow it's White. It's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. Frozen. I've not seen Frozen, but I'm sure you just have fun in Frozen. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> I think Soul's got some messages in there. Has Soul it? has got... Oh my God, Soul isn't in bed. Honestly, please watch it. <laughs> I know it's not your bag. I really, really know that. Uh -huh. But just let Jamie Foxx be the selling point. I love Jamie I know Fox. you love Jamie Foxx, so Fox. just run with that okay. and watch the film because okay. it's so I'm not going to watch it. I but know. Thank you so much for your suggestion. Are we done? I think we're done. We're done. Rachel, we hope you get well. We hope you get well. <laughs> not sick. <laughs> <laughs> we wish you well. I hope and you get well. Yeah, I hope you well. And thank you for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, comment your thoughts. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. See ya. <laughs>